I could I could be ready. You could be ready. I could be ready. Uh, we're you ready. Should. You know, I was looking away for two seconds. I was. And that's how I get got. That's how you get got. I don't mind oh, getting. How got. ready are you, Dom? <clears throat> I'm not looking at the screen, and you've already hit record. So uh, the decision on my readiness could be up to both of you. You know how ready I am. I'm ready. My top ten right now. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Overachievers Gaming Podcast. I'm Hopefully the we worst. Done, we haven't done this in a while. I am your host, Charlie, aka Vash, joined as always by my illustrious buddy Dominic Ashy Pastrami. The well prepared, the well prepared Ashy Pastrami. My life. As he stro- as he quickly goes to create his top ten list, even though he's had two weeks to prepare. This is how I live this my is, life. This is how he lives his life in the moment. And uh, back with us. Friend of the pod, Chef Crondo. Crondo, I think uh, you are pretty much our third overachiever at this point. Nice. So. Hey, I'm, I, a, I'm, I'm, a big, I, I'm a fan of that. I'm, I'm an overachiever. You know what I'm saying? So I was we're achieving all, to get up here. We're all overachievers in all of our hearts. So anyway, That's welcome right. back, friend of the pod. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at OG.podcast. Our Twitter is overachievers P. Our website is beingoverachiever.com where you can get this episode and every other episode where we talk about video games, sometimes Marvel Strike Force. Maybe some cooking, maybe some pasta creation, and then you know this episode going Heck to yeah. video games. Pasta so. creation, that's what's up. Pasta creation is what's up. Um, my wife made lasagna for the very first time yesterday. Oh. It was delicious, and uh, I can't wait to eat more of it. So nice. I had, I, I, we made gnocchis last night. It was great. Nice. Wow. Everyone is doing well. uh, a little quick uh housekeeping this is we're going to take this podcast in 2020 uh, at least this segment of it to once a month so if you dig this podcast the regular gaming there's just a lot going on you know i'm buying a house and i just bought a crazy camera and i'm working full time on a show for like 70 hours a week so i can't really do all of it and need some time to spend with family so i'm going to start doing that and then um this is, we're not going to do a Marvel Strike Force podcast this week either that will pick back up in 2020 as our normally scheduled podcast so in two weeks you'll True. get the uh or next weekend are we doing it next weekend i don't know what we're doing uh we can yeah sure. right, well, we could do it we could we could flip the script all right so we'll, we'll start next weekend with the um so a, a week from today when this podcast comes out is when we will pick back up with our msf segments and whatnot so because your holidays traveling all that fun stuff but anyway this episode is the game of the year episode where we take everything we've talked about for the past year i was trying to make up a, a number of weeks but i think 56 weeks but divided by I think, two no it's 36 no it's 56 56 Th- you think there's 36 weeks in a year buddy it's 52 yeah, let me weeks tell you, isn't there 52 no, god weeks. damn it don't look what's up i don't know I think, <laughs> yeah, I think you're right i think it's 52 weeks in a year i can't i can't do math math but, is irrelevant anyway so this uh i'm excited to talk about the game of the year i'm curious to see what you guys are going to go with and um well, we've uh, I've asked everybody to list their top ten games of mm-hmm. 2019. We're gonna we're gonna do like a quick recap of ten through six, and then we'll mm-hmm. go into detail about why we chose our top five, and uh, eventually go into that. And then we have a little fun segment afterwards where we'll do the biggest disappointment of 2019 and the most overhyped game of 2019. So, Chef, since you are a guest slash third overachiever, uh, what is your top f- or your, your I feel lower like I just five. got promoted man I feel like I just got like did. welcomed into the the yeah, ring I, I hope you're I hope you're I hope, yeah, I hope, so it's like don't, fight club no where like we don't talk about it no then... we no we we want you to talk about it as much as possible oh okay gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> although I, I as, I'm, say, as I'm saying this I don't think it's wise to get into a fight club with Ashy because he's probably just mer- like actually yeah. right now right now is the best time too uh I'm currently I currently have a torn labrum in my oh. right shoulder hmm. uh so if you wanted to fight me, you'd have your best. The, the odds are still stacked, probably in my favor, because I have three other 
well working well that's even a that's even questionable um i'm getting yeah i'm getting an mri uh thursday so two days hobby, after man. this comes out uh i will be finding out why my body is broken remember kids that's why gaming is a good hobby no i'm just kidding exactly you don't hurt yourself gaming. <laughs> well, you know, low right. impact esport low impact exactly. esport. all right exactly. so you want me to read off my 10 through 6 yeah let's go with 10 through right. 6 let's so see what we got. number 10 i'm gonna go with I, I don't know if you call this a sandbox game or not but Untitled Goose Game. Have you guys played that? Have okay, not I mean that. it's it's in my top ten. It's hilarious, dude. Like I bought it just to try it out because my friend was telling me about it. Hilarious yeah. game. It's Very honestly, I'm like I'm blown away by how much of a fun game you could have being a dickhead goose. You're just a goose, dude. You're, you're just a a d- of but not only did, okay. not only are you a go- a goose, you're a jerk. All right, you're I gotta run gen- through this. You're a is gen- it, hold on. Is it is it like Goat Simulator? No. Okay. So you're a goose and your whole, the whole thing you get, you, you, you win by like uh, messing up people's mm-hmm. activities, their day. Like if there's a dude gardening, you can steal his like <laughs> tool or something and like quack, 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 not quack, but like, like oh my quack, goodness. whatever, whatever. Goose, the, goose, the, goose. Yeah. All right. Goose, so, goose, then, goose, goose. so number nine, uh, this was not the best game, but I'm a big fan of one piece. So I had to throw one piece world seeker under there. Cause like, I just enjoyed being Luffy and, punching stuff like sure. that for me was enjoyable sure, sure, um sure. number eight i'm going with luigi's mansion three yeah uh, i was a fan of the game as a kid and when i picked i actually like red box this one and just played it for a weekend and i thought it was great it's just a good red game box. you know wow yeah uh number seven i put kingdom hearts three and number six i put legend of zelda Link's awakening solid solid choice i think uh, i I, I would have had Luigi's Mansion in my top if I actually played it. I just never got it yet. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to play many Switch games, um, although I have Damon's X Machina coming in to me uh, from Gamefly. Shout out to Gamefly. Oh, I'm shit. Just... Still trying to get sponsored. I'm go- I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to. Is there some way that we could like search audio? Because I would love to just search Gamefly in all of our episodes and it's like. I have all the transcripts. I can uh, I can just oh. search for GameFly in the transcripts and find the, the point in which the, uh, the time. No, I'll, I'll do it. Send me the transcripts. I will do all this work. I will make a supercut of us mentioning GameFly. And just give me GameFly, 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 GameFly. GameFly? GameFly. GameFly. What about GameFly? GameFly. 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 I heard GameFly is a great way to <laughs> try out games without spending a ton of money. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Want to learn You're what not- the most overhyped game of the year is? GameFly.com. GameFly. <laughs> <laughs> without, uh, without a regret. Exactly. But yeah, I haven't really had much time to play any Switch games just due to real life stuff and also plus playing through all the craziness that's going on. Um, but yeah, so Dom, what's your uh, bottom five? I'm going to pre- preface my this with my 10 through 8. I've not played yet, but I just know the game. Okay. Uh, number 10 being Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Mm. Uh, haven't played it, but I know I know that if I feel like it, I would be doing a disservice to my my like gaming like like bringing up if I didn't mention uh, Call of Duty. Um, it's good. It's a good game. Exactly. It looks it looks good. I just I'm not gonna buy it. I'm just not gonna spend money on it. But I know that it, I know it's exactly what I would want in a in a Call of Duty right now. Uh, I used to love OG Modern Warfare. Blah blah blah. Uh, Yoshi's Crafted World. Again, I've watched tons of stream, uh, streams of it. It, it looks. Yeah. It, I, I'm, not, I'm just not gonna spend money on it, but I know that I would love it. I just, I, I, my time is being so limited. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, mm-hmm. And Fallen Order. Honestly, Fallen Order is number eight for me on this what? list. What? I haven't played it yet. Okay. I haven't played it okay. yet. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. And it's only number eight on this list because I haven't played it yet. I just know for a fact that it's fire. I know it. I know it deep in my heart. It is, man. I All know. Right, yeah. I'm gonna get mm-hmm. it. I just, I again. I'll spoil it. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, so yeah, number seven, I total goose game. I just never thought I'd have so much fun being a little jerk. All right, I gotta try this game out. You gotta right, do it, dude. It's if you like being a dick, that's it's a good game for you. True. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> True. Uh, and number seven, that's uh, a compliment or not? It's a compliment. No, it is. It is. Uh, and number six, uh, li- also Link's Awakening. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a good quality game, man. I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. There's nothing like crazy good, but yep. it was basically like a reskinned updated version of a link to the past in my mm-hmm. opinion which i'll never i mean i don't need like i don't need any more because there was also um what was you can go charlie i i, I need to figure i need to look at the this uh i'm gonna take my game. time sip my coffee while you have awkward silence while we talk about do whatever that. it is don't that you're that. doing 
Ready uh, to Silence? No? I'm ready okay. to. I'm actually. Was it Pat, Path Between Worlds? What was it? Um, oh, can I throw an honorable Link mention? Can I? Can I throw? No, uh, no, can I throw an honorable honorable mention to Code Vein? No, because I didn't. I didn't really get to play that one too much, but I thought it was a sick game. I yes, Link Between Worlds. Sorry, continue. I I tried Code Vein, couldn't get into it. I thought this was too. It's too like, weebish. It is very weebish, and I couldn't get into that yeah. at all. Like I, I still like the enemy try. style, though. Yeah, I mean, it was cool, but like at first, like I was not expecting Code Vein to be like a Dark st- a Dark Souls mm-hmm, type game. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting into it and, or going into it, and I was like, "What is ha- like? Why am I just getting wrecked?" And I was like, "Oh, this is a Dark Souls style." Because the first boss that you fight and like in the little caverns and whatnot, or mini boss, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Dark Souls style, and that changed my perspective of it. And I was like, okay, this is how I fight these bo- these these enemies now. And I was yeah. like, okay, but I, it was all right. I'm I, with you though; it's too weebish. That's why it's the, an honorable mention. <laughs> the I, I like the concept. The story was just a little out there, but you know, I only played it for like maybe three hours. So there's that. But, um, what did I say before? Is Link's Awakening feels like a better polished uh, Link Between Worlds, which was a follow up of yeah uh, Link to the Past of 3DS, which was a great game. Um, that's what I was trying to go for in the awkward silence before. Sorry. All right. So my bottom five, number 10 for me is Apex Legends. Just number because. 10? Oh, that did come out this year, didn't it? It, it did. did yeah. It came out in February yeah. because I thought it was a good. I, I know. I thought it was it was a good um, alternative to Fortnite. And it did really, really well. And I enjoyed my time with it. These are all games that I've played. Um, but really haven't. Ex- with the exception of two games on this list, I haven't really. um had much time but uh these are all games that my i mean my whole point of this top 10 list is games that i spent a lot of time in i really enjoyed and i thought were challenging and fun and the story were it was uh, you know overall good so that's my <clears throat> reasoning behind my top 10 list so anyway uh number nine was kingdom hearts 3 didn't really get a chance to play it i was never a big kingdom hearts fan yeah so but i i have to i really have to just <clears throat> give them credit where credit's due where like they they came out with a good game um, a good storyline from a lot of what I've seen on streams and people playing and reviews and whatnot. It was really well done, but it also feels like it's a PS3 game uh, playing on a PS4. So that's why it's number nine for me. And then Control. This was almost higher for me if I had a chance to play it. But after watching some reviews and some some gameplay, it looks it looks right up my alley. But I just haven't had a time to play mm. this game whatsoever. But it's just. The mechanics seem pretty interesting. The storyline seems really fascinating. And I wish I just had more time to dedicate to playing it. Number seven was kind of, I don't know, it was a hard... I wanted to put this higher, but I think there were other games that are better for it. It was Death Stranding for me, number seven. I really enjoyed that game quite a lot, but I think it's... There's so other there's games... Better, there's, you said there's better games? Yeah, so I think there are better games than... Yeah. than Death <laughs> like, Stranding. like a lot yeah. of games are better than that. <laughs> I know. I just really, I just really like the the style of that game, where it's just, it's just, uh, you know, if you like, if you ever wanted to become a postal service you know, delivery guy Dude, right? uh, in the post apocalyptic futuristic world of Hideo Kojima, then you know, Death Stranding is for you. Uh, but I, I, I really enjoy the game. I like what it's doing. The, it's gorgeous. I think it's a fun game. So, but that's just me. It that's is gorgeous. Great. I will agree with you. Um, and then my final is Call, uh, Call of Duty: Modern Warfare, the newest one. I thought mm, this yep. was this almost made my top five. Yeah. Um, the the gameplay, like I'm not a multiplayer game. I'm I'm really or a multiplayer gamer for Call of Duty. I should say I really focused on the single player storyline, and is really close to be making my top five. I think it was I, I I bumped out my number five for this one, just because it's um you know it's call of duty but i thought they went in a really interesting direction sure. it's a really dark and gritty storyline yeah and I really yeah. um i really appreciate that and i just i didn't even really storylines in those games yeah it was um the modern warfare series have always been good the black ops hmm. not so much but um it was just i really i really enjoyed it and it was it was a heart it was almost number five for me but then something else beat it so anyway Ooh, those are my something top else 10. beat it spicy yeah. Very spicy. Uh, so, anyway, so how do you want to do the top fives? Are we going to go like it's going to be detail why they're top five, right? Yeah, we'll go into detail why they're your top five and all that fuss, fun stuff. So, I we'll feel go like my with, number um, one's gonna gonna shake the boat, rock the boat. I, I know like what your it. number one is. Oh, you already oh. know what my number one is. I messaged you. I think yeah. I know what it is. I have a feeling. That's gonna that's be Marvel Strike Force. Yeah, it's not. Gonna, <laughs> what'd you say? It's gonna be Marvel Strike Force. 
I mean, it's a new game for me in 2019, you know? That's true. That's a new game for you, but please I'd don't. like to vote for a Marvel Puzzle Quest. Is that actually oh a game? God. Yes. Yeah, dude. It's like Candy Crush, but for Marvel. Jesus. How much does it cost? <laughs> <laughs> everything. The, everything, yeah. And you know, there, you know there are people out there that are dropping. <laughs> I can't. I that could have been, that been a really good uh, uh, fucking, what was it, Endgame? No, uh, Infinity War uh, bit there. How much did it cost? Everything. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, let's get let's get your top five, Chef. All let's right, hear it. Chef, let's go. Oh, number we, four, we'll do. We'll all do number five. We'll all do number five. We'll go around. Circle okay, five. I like this. Oh, I like okay, this. All okay, right, so number okay. five for me is going to be Fire Emblem Three Houses. Another game that I know I need to play. I I had a feeling. So I actually played okay. a lot of Switch games this year, and because I I have a buddy of mine that is a pretty high up dude at Nintendo, and he kind of like there are a few games he told me he's like you got to play this game, so I did, and. uh I thought it was great. So the thing I liked about it the most is I'm a huge fan of, I, I mean, I guess you can call it an RTS game. Mm-hmm. Maybe not, but I'm a huge Final Fantasy Tactics is like one of my ultimate favorite games. And this kind of falls in that category of uh, RPG genre, I suppose. Right. Uh, the storyline is actually pretty good. Um, you know, if you're into the Fire Emblem series, they basically just carry the torch with this game. Uh, there's nothing like outstanding about Fire it. Pun, but- carry the torch, fire. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Damn, that was good, man. I didn't even think. Just like, now you thought about that. I didn't. No, I didn't. We'll give it to you. Okay, good. Good. good, good. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, I mean, that's why it's number five for me because, like, it's like it was in the middle of the pack for me as far as like my favorite games of the year. I'm not going to lie to you. This can sound really bad, but I got into this game probably about, you know, logged in like 20 hours or so. And then I picked up Dark Souls 2. So. And Charlie knows that I kind of like became obsessed with Dark Souls after that. So, you know, it fell off, but I still thought it was a fantastic game. So anyways, that's my number five. Oh, perfect. I wanted to play that game a lot. I heard good things about it. They have like a permadeath mode too. Like if your character dies, like they're dead in the game. Dead, like completely. You so done. I played the casual mode because I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I right, would. Yeah. I, if I could tell you right now that the first time I lose somebody, I'd be like, "Fuck this game!" Like I'm done. <laughs> yeah, my paladin. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how did you? How could you kill Johnson like that, man? And he come back. Yeah. Uh, my number five. I'm almost mad that it's my number five, but also I can't. I can't deny. Okay, my number five is the Division Two, and <laughs> the game was quite frankly an utter disappointment in the long run. But like, I just still can't deny that I love the Division One. I put in. I don't even want to talk about how much hours I put in the Division One, and the Division Two was on its way to being the same direction. But then they just stopped doing anything for it, which is why it's number five. Honestly, it probably could have got into the six, the top six, but like I still did play a bunch of it. Um, Apparently it got better. I haven't had a chance to I'm, revisit it. And, you know, that's always the oh, it's almost a bummer when you hear that. Oh, it got better. It's like, why couldn't it well, just been good? That's, that's what it is with all these game <laughs> games of service kind of well, especially you know, MMO it, so. lights. It's like yeah. it's so easy for it to like they're like oh it'll be good and it's like the community's like it's not good it's like oh we'll make it better later just hang on you know uh but yeah division two man, just, is my hang on. just hang on the game yeah. that you paid 60 bucks for it'll get better i promise and that you're gonna be paying for dlc and, and <laughs> season pack. Well, yeah, the dlc's exactly. free in that game but anyway. oh at least good maybe maybe i'll pick it up again especially especially if it's gotten better but you know we'll we'll see but yeah that's my number yeah. five division two yeah, I've I've actually been playing a lot of. I'm almost done with the trophies for uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, um, and I've okay. actually been having a lot of fun with that game. And it made me want to pick up the Division Two because it's the uh, uh, Breakpoint feels like a, a shittier version of the Division, and it kind of makes me want to just go back and play the Division because I really think they did a lot right with that game. Sure, so, sure. Um, I'm just curious to see um, what what's changed and whatnot. So yeah, all right. So my number five is. Um, is uh interesting it is uh marvel ultimate alliance 3 oh yes dude okay <laughs> you know honestly i feel like i probably could have kicked off number 10 call of duty modern warfare 4 ultimate alliance 3 i just i stopped playing the game after like three days to be honest really? yeah well it was it's fun like i i had a lot of good times with that game i, I beat the storyline yeah uh, i wanted i was i really what i wanted from that game i got out of it so it's like sure. There was uh, it has the, the grind grindiness to it, which I kind of like. It has like 
the Diablo style beat em up, mm-hmm. which I was a big fan of. It has a lot of, um, you know, it's got the Marvel characters, which like after playing Marvel Strike Force for the past two years, like I kind of mm-hmm. got more involved in the Marvel games and movies and all that sort of stuff. I wanted to learn more, introduce different characters. I started reading more comics. So for me, it was kind of like, and just an extension of all that. So sure. whereas like having, you know, playing Marvel Strike Force, I was like, okay, I don't really want to spend money on this game because it's, you know, it's a cash grab. Let, yeah. it's like, let me, yeah. let me play other games that are interesting in that same realm. And I love Marvel Ultimate Alliance one and two. Yeah. And I booted up uh, Marvel Alliance Ultimate Alliance two um, for the PlayStation four just to see what it was. You know, I was like, oh, you know, I still have this game as PS3. Um, or actually, no, I'm sorry, I booted up on my PS3. And I was like, you know, I'm going to just try it out and, and check it out. It was a lot of fun. And I was like, you know, okay, in anticipation for Ultimate Alliance 3. I kind of wish they brought it out for another system other than the Switch because I feel, you know, I like playing was it on exclusive? my... Was this Switch yeah. exclusive? Yeah, it's exclusive oh. to Switch, yeah. Which I think helps it because for portability because you just take it anywhere you want, yeah, which is yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. But the... I just kind of wish it was on a, you know, it has more firepower behind it because I feel like the graphic, the art style could have been a little bit better. They could have done a little bit more with it. Uh, right. I just wish it wasn't exclusive to the Switch, um, which it's just fine, I guess, yep. but it wasn't whatever. So anyway, that was mine. <laughs> um, I still need to play more of it, but uh, I got essentially I finished the I finished the campaign. I went back and leveled up all my characters, all the same level. And then uh, I got really busy and haven't played it since. But it's it was definitely um, that's why it's my number five. So it just yeah, has a lot happened. of well, it checks a lot of boxes and just, you know, just good. It was fun. I, I enjoyed it quite a lot. That's good, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. I, so, don't, I, don't know. I just didn't. I just can keep it up. That's all. My number four is Marvel Ultimate Alliance three. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that's me why. Funny. That's funny. Tell me why. So for me, mine was like, so you said you had the single player experience. Mine was purely 100% multiplayer experience. And that's what I loved about it. So myself, my boy Trondo, and I know, you know, Fett. Uh, Fett, we th- the three of us basically just like obliterated the game together and we would like take like one random person and we'd roll through missions and I don't know it was just a blast man like it was probably one of the best multiplayer experiences I've had in a while because I'm a huge fan of Diablo 3 well Diablo yeah. 2 Diablo 3 <clears throat> I got burned out on Diablo 3 because I mean oh yeah know, dude it's I've been, been out played. for many years and you know you, you roll through those I don't even remember what they're called anymore, but you roll through those missions like so many damn times. Like, rift done, rift runs yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, It all becomes the same. Right. So, you know, after I had my like 500 Paragon level, you know, hardcore character, I'm like, well, what do I do? So the thing I like about Ultimate Alliance is that they had like the challenge missions and stuff like that. So like hmm. even if your character was maxed out, there were still challenges that you had to not suck at in order to complete. Sure. So which I, I can't say the same for anything <clears throat> in Diablo, in my opinion. But um yeah, I don't know. I, I love the characters. I will say that I had one gripe with the game. Two. One, it was very short. And I know that their I know that their reasoning behind that is because they're gonna obviously release more content through DLC yeah. and stuff like that. But um <clears throat> there's my my one minor gripe. And the other one was the skins were god awful. Like I know that they've gotten a little bit better, but I mean, I was like, come on, dudes, like you're you, you, you gotta you do this you do this challenge mission and you unlock like, oh, Wolverine has skin. like a, a yellow outfit instead of a blue outfit, you know, like it's, yeah, sure. it's just like a reskin sure. color. It wasn't, yeah. there wasn't much thought put into that. And, um, but that was, that was it. I, I thought it was a great game. I sank probably easily like, you know, 40, 60 hours into the game. And, wow. uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun, a lot yeah. of fun with that game. Hell yeah. funny. The, the only multiplayer experience I've had in the game was when it first came out and it had so many multiplayer issues with when Dom and I tried to actually play the game together and could not get it to work. Uh, I haven't tried it since then, so I'll have to, you know, Tat. maybe maybe uh, hop in w- with some games with your condo and just have some good time. Oh, dude, I yeah, we should totally do that. We should. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I, I would try again. Oh, yeah. That'd be hilarious. Oh, that's that's uh, af- after the game of the year. That's just all, you know. Ha, you know, bury our sorrows with whatever we think is our letdown, and then just put some hope in the line. I can't wait to hear this letdown, man. I want to hear the rant because oh, I'm pretty sure that I know what game is yours, and I, yeah, but okay. Anyways, Dom, number four. Uh, my number four is Resident Evil Two, the remake. Ooh, okay, yeah. All right. I uh, let me tell you, there were. I was like, I don't. I'm not necessarily like. Okay, I was gonna, I was gonna try to talk myself up. I do scare easy. I was gonna try to say I wasn't scared easy. <laughs> that game was scary, uh, dude. No, that game was so scary. 
It was terrifying at parts. It, it was so good that Mallory, my girlfriend, who it doesn't like does like video games, like you know, she'll play like Zelda or like Mario and stuff. She got like so into like just like she like passed by and see me playing it. She like what what? And I was like, oh, it's a scary game, blah blah. She sat. She was. She just pulled up a chair and sat next to me, and watched me play. Mm. Uh, it's just, it's it was really really good. Yeah. Like man, they nailed it. Like mm-hmm. it's a, and it's a remake. It's not even a new game in 2018. It's a remake. It's a, it kind like, of I'll is a new it. game though. Like yeah, yeah, it really is. It, as a huge, I mean, you obviously can see yeah. that I've got the RE2 back yeah. here. Like yeah. I'll tell you right now, that is that game is actually different in in true. certain ways. Very true. Very true. Uh. Yeah, I loved it. Absolutely. Which is it. awesome because usually when they do remakes, they suck. They usually, yeah, it's not, it's not yeah. Or they're meh, you know? It's like, yeah. But, For sure. Yeah. And RE3 is coming on next year. I know. I'm oh, so stoked for that. I can't wait, wait dude. Do you want to talk about terrifying, dude? You know, yeah. Nemesis never stops following you. Yeah. Like, yeah. throughout the, he it persists throughout the entire game. Like, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be so good. I can't wait to hear the sound, the sound effect of him just like crushing through the wall at you, and you're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> just be like stars, stars, and not not like you know, not star fragments, just stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so my number four game is Days Gone. Ooh, I don't know if okay. you guys had chance to, i haven't played i didn't it, play I, it but i, I saw people yeah. stream it i remember you were really into it i remember you play, yeah i i spent a lot of time in that game uh, and the reason why it's my number four i mean it's a playstation exclusive so if you don't you know sorry dom you don't probably won't play it on <laughs> yourself a ps4 but uh it's uh, I, I i platinum that game as well i had a lot of i had a lot of fun with that it was kind of like um you know they they had their the main things that I really enjoyed with that was like it was a nice, fun open world. Mm-hmm. They had a ton of uh, mechanics in the game, which I thought were fun. Like you know, just the horde modes uh, was was a ton. I I beat the and I beat the game and played the game um, before version point or one point oh three came out, which is where they they fix a lot of shit. So a lot of sure. people's problems with the games um, and the bugs and whatnot I, were still um, apparent when I was playing the game. Yeah. But I didn't really have that many bugs i had a couple audio bugs and whatever but you know that's kind of i kind of expect that you know it's it's fine it, that doesn't take me out of the experience um as much as it does for some other people sure but um i really enjoyed the storyline in it i like i thought the the voice acting was superior and was fantastic i re- really had a good time with that which i feel like it's not usually talked about fucking bug and I usually <laughs> just a fly just ran right in my face. I feel like we don't really talk about voice acting too much. And I think it's such a critical part of, of our, of this world. And yeah. I, I, I really, I, it's like, you, it's almost, you gotta give a shout out, shout out. Like sometimes like when it, it's just genuinely good, like that's a genuinely good actor doing that, you know? Yeah. And, and also the mocap was the motion capture just made yeah. you feel like you're part of that world. And I, sure. I just, which to me as a filmmaker and storyteller is very important for me to yeah. like, feel like you're involved in like your choices and decisions matter um there there's some questionable um there are some questionable things with that game of like the character's decisions and like there's a lot sure. of like like when you go running out running up on a on a on an enemy stronghold or whatever it is he's just like oh, i'm gonna fucking kill every last one of you like you guys are all <laughs> murderers and thieves. Yeah. Well, i'm like what the fuck because the last thing like, he's it's, just it's- on the phone with his girlfriend he's like oh hi like this is uh it's like you're having a great day i hope you're good it's like oh, i'm gonna kill all you murderless thieves and rapists yeah, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck, what all the right. hell is going on all here? right it's maybe but yeah <laughs> it was it was a little it might have been a little much but uh you know the the, the zombie horde mechanic was um it, it was great i felt like with the game itself you never you were never really felt overpowered which i feel like is sure. hard to do in a game because it's i feel like it's very easy to to make you as a as a player feel like you're able to really um you know just like roll through everything even at end right. game like you right. all all of the hordes and whatnot that you're facing um are dangerous like they're they're hard to kill like even if you have like the best armor the best weapons the best whatever it still takes a it still takes a lot to go through and and, True. and kill all those guys so um i thought that the mechanic was great i made me feel you know, scared at times and made me feel like I was like not in control and which is like, you know, cause you're playing a game. You're like, okay, well, how do I, you know, how do you do this on, on a game and whatnot to make you and make yeah. a character or, or player feel powerful, but yet not powerful, like all powerful, essentially not like, a, yeah, true. You know, like destiny or whatever it is. <laughs> um, well, I'm not all powerful. When I play destiny. I get smoked all the time. 
Yeah, well, that's, I mean, we know that, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> and whatever. So, anyway, so yeah, uh, number four for me is Days Gone. So, if you haven't played it, I'm sure there's plenty of deals out there. I definitely give, recommend giving it a go. It's definitely worth your time if you feel, if you're looking for a game that's kind of like a, uh, you know, an open world zombie game, it was fun. I definitely recommend it. True. Dope. Oh wait, no, that was, that oh, was it my turn. Is my oh, turn? Yeah, it's, number it is three. Your turn, yeah. Are we down to number three? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, I know. Case. I know. I know. Vash is gonna love this one. So okay. my number three is gonna be Sekiro. <laughs> that game. Shadows die. What is it? Shadows uh, die twice. Shadows I, die uh, forever. I, I, I bet forever. we know, we all know what uh, Vash's uh, letdown game is. Yes. So um, I I mean I'm sorry. Like I liked it. So I didn't I play apologize. the whole I game. Apologize, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, it did win game of the year, but, uh, well, there you I, which I, which I think is, it's not for me. I, I think that's a little bit of a stretch, but, yeah. uh, it, just, just for me personally, I, I think it's a great game, but there are flaws in it. So like considering you know, like, the fact everything? that you, <laughs> <laughs> Savage, well, dude. for me, it's Savage. like, okay. So I, I, Charlie knows this is my first year playing these kinds of games. Like I just got into right. Dark Souls earlier in the year. Yeah, Dark Souls yeah, yeah. 2. Plowed through that. Beat Dark Souls. Played like through half of Bloodborne. And like I tried Code Vein for like a day. It was like, nah, not for me. But yeah. then I I had a friend of mine that he <laughs> he'd never played one of these games before. And I'm like, yeah, go get like Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, yeah. just or Bloodborne. Like, don't start with Sekiro. Goes out and buy Sekiro, right? And he's like, this yeah. game is so hard. I'm like, yeah, you dumbass, because it's the fuck. It's like the it's like they're the pinnacle of difficulty in their mind. For sure. Right? For sure. Cause I mean, like all the gameplay mechanics in Dark Souls 2 or in Dark Souls is kind of revolved around like, okay, I can level up, I can dodge, I can, you know, kind of find my way around things. But in this game, it's just like relentless like you got to be like a parry master in this game in order to get through it like and i i gotta be honest with you i am not a parry master it, I'm no, like it's hard a, man that's like hard hand and coordination to parry it, really it really is and i mean i watch the guys that do like the 30 minute speed runs and i mean obviously I, you know they're breaking through the maps and stuff like that but either way you watch them do those boss fights and they're just flawlessly yeah. pulling it off and it's like dude i do not have that kind of skill in these games which is why it's my number three because like yeah for me I think it's be- I think it's a beautiful looking game. I think yeah. the, the combat is actually really cool. If I didn't suck at it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. think it's cool. Like I think it's cool that the fact that they had like it's very samurai esque, where um, like, it's just I don't know, it's just like everything you know, like it's not Shinobi, PlayStation it's it? samurais. Yeah, it's pl- no, it's not. It's on Xbox, I think. No, it's on Xbox and PC. Um, it's on sale. But uh, I'm try to get that. I think it's a great game. Obviously, I think it's a very high skill cap if you're interested in that kind of thing. Like if you're the kind of person that finds games to be too simple or most of the time, let me tell you, that game will definitely make you bang yeah. your head against the wall a few times. You'll definitely you're run like, a few controllers. Yeah, like you're just like <laughs> running through an area and somebody's like, phew, like hits a, throws a shuriken at you. You don't even see it coming from anywhere. Just poof, dead. Just like, done. what just the done. fuck was that, dude? Just like, for, yeah. <laughs> like, I literally can't even see where you're coming from at all. And you just like one shot me in the head. Like, that's some bullshit man but yeah, hilarious yeah and the other thing like i will say my biggest gripe with the game which i think i understand why somebody was explaining to me why they didn't do it but i don't like the fact you can't customize your character like it's a soulborn game kind of so like yeah. you know you can't get new swords you can't change your gi you can't change like, oh, anything really? about yourself no it's just straight up like i mean you can level up your character in terms of uh Weird. Like, you can get different abilities and stuff like that but you don't get to change your weapons or anything which i thought was definitely weird because it's a from software game so and that's kind of what they're notorious for uh is the ability to like completely customize your character but i think huh that's weird i thought it was weird but i because i didn't actually know that before i started playing the game and i just thought the speedrunners, you know because that's the only thing i had seen leading up to that i thought right. they just didn't do it because you know those guys are so good they don't need to do it they yeah, just and start and boom yeah yeah, yeah nope. they're just like to the end and i'm over there on the first boss like what the fuck yeah, is what, this what is bullshit happening? Game? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, then you get to that boar fight and you're like i hate everything about this game hilarious <laughs> sure. but anyways, 
Fair. I think I think that's uh, it. Did obviously that game did not make my top ten whatsoever because I personally <laughs> hate that game. But that's just. Me. I want. Let's I, save that for the end. Let's save that for the end. I want. I yeah, want to hear yeah. your full on. I want to hear the full Charlie rant on that. Oh goodness. Okay. But I. But I will say like it. I think for people who have not played Dark Souls, uh, will have a better time at Sekiro than people who have spent years and years and years playing Dark Souls. I agree. So I think. So I think you. If you haven't played Dark Souls, play Sekiro. You'll really enjoy it. If that's if you like a difficult game, um, and then go back and play Dark Souls. I don't recommend going playing Dark Souls and then playing Sekiro. Because Dark Souls I've is played way easier. It, it's opinion. way easier and it's it's different mechanics it's yeah. different play styles yeah. it's i could not get the parry down uh I, we'll talk about it later but yeah. Uh, yeah. it's just it's um if that's your sort Perrier. of thing i definitely <laughs> parry i don't know why that, yeah i don't know why. <laughs> don't, don't, don't ask questions don't ask don't, when i say that it doesn't matter uh let me tell you i suck at parrying and securo but you put a lightsaber in my hands it's a whole nother ball game that that game. Ball game, baby. Yes. All right, so anyway. move, all right, don't, don't, my don't. Uh, my number three could easily be switched. At my number two easily. Uh, my number three I put is Pokemon Sword and Shield. I oh, I thought that was going to be your number one. No, 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 oh. no. Uh, I that's why I'm saying. My, but my top three, realistically, all three of them could probably be uh, like as like a single unit. But I think the way I put them makes sense for why they are the way. So number three, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Pokemon Shield specifically. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this game. The mechanics were dope. Max rating is dope. Like, um, I honestly have no complaints probably about the game. I can't think of a, a complaint. Um, a little repetitive and I'm not in, I'm, tr- I was tr- for a minute, I was trying to get into the competition scene and like, I was going to like stream some, some battles, but like, I, 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 I don't know if I want to bother to be honest, because the people that are doing that, they're sick at it. Probably they're sick at it. They're light years ahead of me already. Like just, just from not playing a little bit, I feel like I'd have so much to catch up on, which mm-hmm. maybe who cares, you know, but that is kind of the bummer is it is the grind is a little repetitive to get the dope Pokemon. The cool thing though, is you could rent teams from pro players or from anyone. Really? Really? Like, you could rent teams and play with those teams. So it kind of, it what do kind you mean of you can rent it. Yeah. So uh, you, can, if you have a team, you could create a, a code for it, and you can save that team, like put the enter that code into your into your like pre, your comp your team compositions, and you could quote unquote rent a team. So like you literally play with those Pokemon from that person in a competitive way. So I can go into any gameplay, any PvP gameplay, and use a rented te- a rented team. That's kind of crazy. So, like, do it's, now do they cool. get any? Do they get anything out of that? Any no, chance? no. It's it, it just something you could do, you know. And, and I already, huh. I've, I've played with some like dope, like team comps, which is really fun. And I do, and that is awesome. That I could do that. It is awesome. That I don't have to like grind to get like a crazy like hidden ability, Appleton, blah blah blah. But I still want that Pokemon, even though it's hard to get. I still want that Pokemon, right? So like, yeah. And that's the grind to like it's part of the collection. Exactly. Uh, so it, 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 it again, dope. Loved it. Uh, graphics cool. I like. It's the first Pokemon for a console. Um, even though Switch is handheld, it still is a console, and I, th- I think that still gets rec- that should get the recognition it deserves for being the first Pokemon game on a console. Um, not like Pokemon Stadium or Snap or anything, but you know what I mean. Which were uh, such good. I mean, great Pokemon game. Snap. But and and the cool thing about uh, excellent game. Sh- sword and shield is it kind of takes elements from pokemon stadium which in my opinion was one of the best n64 games that was such a fun fun good game and Wait, in, i mean the the photo safari one wasn't your favorite i love I, I did love snap i did love pokemon snap the pokemon stadium like, was so dope i know right but it's great it's great though <laughs> But with Stadium, I love Stadium because they really did a good job of giving you that 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 aspect. But in, so in Sword and Shield, all of the gyms are in a giant stadium, and the new ability for Pokemon uh, uh, G Max, your po- you can make a Pokemon like gigantic, Gigantamax is called, uh, and they have like different uh, abilities and shit. It's really cool. It's really fun new addition. People were like hating on it beforehand, but I think people are now like over that all over, over all the crap they were giving it. But yeah, that was number three. Loved it. What, were, what, what was the thing? Because like I actually don't even so uh, there's a, like there's like a million Pokemon at this point, and every yeah. Pokemon you could you could still get every Pokemon from the previous games. It was called the okay. National Deck, and you had the Pokemon Bank. So you'd bank all your Pokemon 
from this game and the next game, you'd be able to add them to your Pokedex so that you can have a full Pokedex, right? And this one, they didn't they didn't have the Pokemon Bank. They don't have the national decks. So people are upset that you can't collect every single Pokemon from wow, previously. Wow. Yeah, I think well, that's like, actually good, personally. Relax. Like, there's a million Pokemon, dude. Yeah. And that's the thing. The argument is that no matter how dumb or lame or small or whatever Pokemon is, there is someone on this planet that that is their favorite Pokemon. And you can always get your favorite Pokemon. But it's like, I don't think that that is enough to take away from the game. And I think by now, all the people that had that argument, they're all playing it. Like all the big streamers and people who are like, I'm not going to play it. No natural decks. They're all playing it. They're all doing it. So it's like, you know, uh, it's okay. It's all good. The game is great. I think that it's consistent now that it's a good game. So, yeah. Those are probably the same people that were like, the new Star Wars movie sucks. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those people. No. Well, you're a, you're a, you're a dingus. No, right, Skywalker? I'm not. I'm, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I We didn't get a chance to record our, our no, thoughts and whatnot. So, just because of, you know, life. Life happens. It happens. It is what it is. Adulting. Um, right, Skywalker. Adulting. Rules. Yeah. Yeah, just no, is, number, is number three Rise of Skywalker for you? <laughs> yeah, number three Rise of Skywalker. No, uh, <laughs> all right. So number three for me. Uh, so what I was going to say is, um, you know, I I enjoyed the Rise of Skywalker. I just uh, wish it was a little better. That's all it was. That's all. I you know, you, it's like why we complain so much about Marvel Strike Force. We care. We want it to be good. That's why. Anyway, okay, um, okay. It wasn't wasn't bad. Wasn't great. Man. I just wanted more Dark Ray, right, guys? Come on, I man. Was great. I mean, dude, I, I'm so I'm sick. She did look no sick as well. Right. Anyway, um, it, yeah, no, it's I, in the trailer. Bad. It's fine. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. number three for me is the division two. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, I, Charlie, I didn't see this coming from a mile away. I did not no? see this coming. I did not see it. Once you didn't say it as top six through ten, I was like, all right, he probably. Didn't. I figured Sekiro was going to be number three for him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's this, this, this. Is there, bit is there is a the bottom one hundred list? Keep because we all list. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah. So the yeah. So for me, Division Two is obviously the Division is one of my favorite games of all time. The, the original one, just because of you know it's based in New York. Uh, I lived in New York for ten years, and so or close to ten years. Uh, actually, this summer will be ten years for me. Uh, well, in the New York area, I should say, because I haven't been in New York in three years. But anyway, uh, spent a lot of time in New York in the past uh, t- decade, and True. it just it was. Um, no, no, I really enjoyed the division. So, and then obviously the division two is set in DC, and I'm from Baltimore. Spent a lot of time in DC, sure. so I really wanted to. Uh, I really enjoyed my time uh, running around DC. Uh, the, the level of detail in that game is outstanding. Just like the gameplay mechanics at the time, because I I played this before um, right as the raids. I stopped playing right as the raids came out, just because like the teams I was running with just didn't really. I mean, they were they were. You know, they could do the, the content, but I just didn't have the time to really devote to gearing up and do all sort of stuff. There's kind of like once once you hit a at that point in time in the game, once you hit a certain level, it kind of got stale and I just kind of fell off. And so I didn't want to just run the same. I didn't want to run around the dark zone and just get gear for the sake of getting gear um, just to have a different chance of pulling a different stat and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, but the um, so but uh, the classes I thought were great with the exception of with the exception of like not being able to to play a healer which i thought was kind of stupid is division an rpg that's like an mmo it's it's like a mmo tactical shooter it's like like destiny kind of the division is like a a shooter yeah it's it's it's, it's really fun i I mean i I know we're here to talk about games and i know i'm a gamer but like i gotta be honest with you guys like when it comes to those kinds of games i usually stay away from them because i will rage the fuck out of my mind over that kind of stuff so like I stay away from the post. No, it's fair. I, I think a lot I, of people are the same way in, in certain aspects. Yeah. Yeah. The I thought that the storyline. So I really enjoyed the storyline from the division, and they kind of carry that over. I don't know if you know that the storyline is Krondo. That's so essentially uh, the, the quick recap from the division one is so they um, there's something that's called the dollar flu. Is somebody uh, injected smallpox into a bunch of dollar bills and passed them out on Black Friday. So because of all the money changing hands with right. all in the world, like it created time. like this pandemic with uh, of this virus outbreak and whatnot, since, you know, smallpox is like one of the most deadly viruses mm-hmm. ever 
to exist. Um, it shuts down New York. There's a bunch of like, uh, d- there's a dark zone, which is like contaminated and quarantined one. You can't go in unless you have certain uh, things. It was just very smart uh, gameplay. Yeah. And they, ex- they expand upon that into DC um, with with uh, the Division 2. So the Division 1 takes place uh, from from essentially November through February. So in the winter months. And so they had like things where like you had a, you know, a winter storm comes through New York and it's uh, you know, they have a survival mode. Constantly snowing, constantly snowing, which is, which is, it made the game look gorgeous. And it's still, I still recommend playing the division one, especially on PC because you can but get yo, it for like $3. My favorite thing was the radio guy would like, anyone ever wonder why it's always, it's still snowing after like three years. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> they even recognize that it's a like, you know, a little fourth yeah. wall break there. But the so Division Two takes place in the summertime in DC, so it's you know a lush lush screens like it's overgrown, it's you know things are broken down like you know they they it's, it takes place I think like six months or a year cool. after the events um, of the Division One, still carrying on the storyline. So it's like you know they the after the world collapses essentially because of this virus is like all these different um, gangs start up and and and, and you know you're, you're tasked to help the government like rebuild and as a division agent and take out these people so i really like the squad mechanics of the game and i really like the tactical elements of the of the division and i thought it was just a lot of fun like the like the shooting mechanics are great and the thing that the one thing that i loved about these types of games who are like you know they focus on multiplayer aspect and they focus on like creating a squad and going through and doing everything is you can play the entire story by yourself and not feel uh, underpowered. Like hmm. you can actually go through, complete every single mission on your own by yourself without having the need for a squad. I always feel like there comes a point, like even for boss battles, like it might be tough. It's going to be, it, there's definitely hard moments of it, but you can do it. Like it's not, it's not a game where you can't like, you know, you need a squad to, f- to beat this fight. Like, no, you'll, you'll, you can do it. You just won't get as good loot as you would sure. if you had a squad, but like you can go through and do it. And I thought that it was uh, a smart way of doing it and making it fun. So that way everybody could, um, if you don't want to play with friends or if you, you know, just antisocial or whatever, you can still go and do in all the, all the events and everything by yourself. So, um, yeah. The only thing I will say that I don't like about the Division Two after playing Breakpoint for a while is how bullet spongy everything is. Oh, but I don't know dude, if they changed not, that. that is, that's always going to be a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, what do you mean by um, bullet spongy? Uh, so like a, a raid is just you sit behind cover and just brrr, reload, brrr, and you just hit. You're just hitting the boss for like yeah, an some, hour. <laughs> some guy, <laughs> you know, you're just like you're shooting a guy who's uh, um, running around in like a uh, a gas mask and like a vest and with like cut off sleeves and whatnot. And you're like shooting him and he doesn't do anything. He doesn't. <laughs> really so that's really all. It is. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Because with playing Breakpoint, like you know, there's guys with armor. Uh, you can shoot off their their helmet and then you can one shot them with a headshot. But I mean, that's a yeah. t- that's a different that's a different game. So um, it's that's uh, neither here nor there. Even though they have raids in that game, I haven't really played it. But I will uh, definitely have to uh, keep my eyes off for that. It's fun. I would. I, I would it. say if you if you find the Division One on sale for like under ten bucks, I definitely recommend playing that. Or actually, I mean, it's on sale all the time. You know what I'm thinking yeah. though? This might yeah. be the perfect game to rent from GameFly.com. Ah, <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> Use our promo code. Actually, we don't have promo code. Yeah. We don't have promo code. But it it is. But um, we could gamefly.com if, if well, you, I got, so I, I was gonna say it but there is an affiliate program and I, I i started the process of signing us up for it right now you have yeah it's already happened oh great it's not done yet but it'll it's gonna be done soon promo we'll code Shep Rondo. I, no, I treated <laughs> i tweeted to them i, tr- I know, so like I long story, yeah i treated them and they responded like here's our affiliate link so yeah. hey oh shit oh shit <laughs> should do it anyway uh but yeah so if you get a chance uh i mean definitely recommend playing the division one because i think it's a really good game but if you if yes if, uh, it's People constantly on it. it's constantly on sale on, on playstation and whatnot and pc so like i bought it for both pc and console i played it more on console obviously because i have more friends on console but it's definitely it's definitely worth a game it's definitely worth checking out and it's a game that i spent many hours on and i think i'm going to go back and try uh, to see what they because they added a new class and they added some other things. I yeah. want to go back and check it out again, um, just because I had just you know I had so much fun in that game and I it, to the point where I was remotely playing uh, the Division Two when it launched because I was in Texas at the time for South by Southwest in Austin and I was like remotely logged into my iPad playing on a on a controller to like try to like 
the feature is cool. Know, level up. Yeah, it's cool. So but anyway, I can tell you really like that game by the way you talk about it. Yeah, it's just it's I, a good game. I have I haven't played it in a while, but it was de- it's definitely it's a lot of fun. So I just this, and is after the, playing, this is the way I feel about my number one pick. Yeah. So all right. So uh, Krona, what's your number two? So my number two is going to be Star Wars Fall as a Jedi Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah, Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. So I just got this game two days ago. Ooh. And I can't stop playing it. I can't stop okay. thinking about it. It's okay. so good. So I actually wanted to ask you, Charlie, do you think it's like a combination of Dark Souls and Assassin's Creed? I think it's a combination of Uncharted and Dark Souls. Okay. So I never played Uncharted. But like for me, the so hist- I have a bad history with jumping and things like that. <laughs> and my best friend knows that. So yesterday he asked me uh, to uh, to watch the gameplay because he was considering buying it. And all he needed to do was watch me. I was on the first planet, Bogota or something like that. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, the second planet with that starts with an N, I think. Nifa? I can't remember. Yeah, right oh, no, C- it starts with a Z. Anyways. Um, Defo. So I was doing that part where you where there's like the turbines that are coming around and you have to use mm-hmm. the force to stop them for a minute. You got to jump over and time everything perfectly. And there were parts where like I would use the force and I wouldn't jump it. I wouldn't use it again. And I would just be like going right into the thing as it was coming back around. And I mean, <laughs> stuff like that and like learning how yeah. to like force stop the 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 little things that are like, doom, they're like charging <laughs> in and charging out and you got to like run in between them. I just do that. Oh, the game is so good, man. Like there's just something so satisfying about a having a lightsaber B True. having a dual sided lightsaber so that like when I walk up on a pack of people, I can just be like, you know what? <laughs> Let me pull out the second one and just do 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 mm-hmm. fu- And oh yeah. Oh, I just see a, I just see this dude standing by a ledge force push him right off. Like that to me is like the most as a nerd, as I love a how lover of Star Wars. You, you're just dude, so it's stoked. so good, man. I'm telling I haven't, I've been playing the game for like, I want to say like 10 to 15 hours so far because I just got it and I don't even think I've scratched the surface on it. Like it's I know it's yeah. not a super long game, but I like the fact that there's uh those little um, what are they called? The little things you can pick up, Charlie, the uh, the collectibles or whatever they have. Well, yeah, there's I mean, that that's another part that's really cool is like you can actually like like customizing your lightsaber doesn't change the stats yeah. of it. But yeah. like you can definitely and there's lots of options to make it look like how you want it to look. And that to me yeah. is actually very cool. It gives you a little bit of like personal flair. And uh, I'm super excited to I haven't even fought the first boss yet, dude. The first boss, I think, oh, man. I think I fought was like a big uh, like the big Ooga Booga thing. Yeah, the big time. Let me tell you, I died to that thing. Like, so, so I died. went to that thing first, Ooga like Booga, an idiot yeah. didn't get BD one. So I go over to this guy. I died like 20 times. I'm like, what the fuck you know like is this how this game is gonna be is this gonna be dark souls all over again and i run around the corner i'm like okay i gotta try something else out and i get bd1 you go back and you whoop the toad's ass and i'm like oh okay well i just wasted an hour of my life because i was impatient and went the wrong way (laughs) Uh, but that's kind of how those games go right that's true you know you can uh the fun thing about that is um uh later on uh you get force pull you can pull the tongue out and chop it off it's fun wow a lot of stuff I love this game dude it's so oh, dope dude i i guess just because I'm, i mean look guys i've got my my death star coffee mug here i mean you can tell yeah, i'm obviously a star wars head so like for rules. me it's it's definitely and 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 it has been forever since they've put out a good star wars game i think that's that the biggest forever. thing i feel yeah. like i mean battlefront 2 is not well, bad now apparently but yeah apparently now it's fire which i'm gonna it does I'm look gonna pretty cool again. Be up, but people are loving it right now it's like genuinely yeah. a, like the the latest like changes are apparently i'm gonna start playing again definitely uh i just think it's been since knights of the old republic 2 since i've really liked a star wars game that was put out so or maybe jedi academy that one was pretty good but yeah so anyways because i know i i have a feeling that uh there's gonna be somebody else here that puts that in there in their top three but uh yeah, I just wish I played it. Uh, I'm I'm, just, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. It, it would it would have probably been higher for me. It's on sale right uh, now. Yeah, 
Yeah, of course it is. You should get it. Of course it is. I'll, I'll, I'll go real quick because my number two is also Jedi Fallen. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. Nice. So nice. I, I, to, to expand on what you're saying, because I, I finished it. I've platinum on the game. I've gotten everything you can do in that game. The customization is great. I thought like the worlds that we've always heard about. Yes. In, in yes. The Star Wars universe. You never get to visit either in the movies or anything like that. Uh, with we get to go to Kashyyyk. Like, yes. Kashyyyk is awesome. Uh, it, it's just... The level of detail given to that game is great. And I was a little concerned with EA putting it out because so like, so they had like collectibles and like and skins that you could do with the lightsabers of your of yourself, of BD1, of your ship, of your poncho, whatever. I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to be a <laughs> transaction hell. Like, it'd be cool, but like, I just don't want to have like pop ups, pop up. And there's none of that. None like, of they were true. They were true to their word. Yeah. Everything is collectible in the game. Uh, you can customize it however you want uh, with colors, with like different material with lightsabers. And I would go back and change my color every now and then. I'd change like what the lightsaber looks like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Little things like that, which I think were pretty badass. And uh, just a ton of fun with that game. And just, oh, man, it's just such a good. Like some of the things you have so to good. do, like, okay, so the first puzzle I had to do when you're in that one artifact chamber or whatever, and you have to actually like use the force to push the ball around in certain places. Like mm -hmm. to me, like that's so what, like if you were a Jedi, right. And you walked into these places, like you have to find yourself in situations where you'd look around and be like, well, what can I use this, this badass ability I have called the force to like get through this room. Right. Uh, so yeah. like you have to actually like, that's the thing to me that I think is the coolest shit ever is I have to think like a Jedi. Like I can't just be like right, right, in dark right. souls. You know, when I see a pack of four dudes, I'm like, all right, well I'm gonna go in and just get Fuck out my great sword, a great Lance and just be like, Oh, <laughs> Fuck all of you but in this game it's like you can't do that so i mean you don't have that ability and maybe you do later on but i don't right now so um i'm not gonna say like, yeah 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 yeah. i mean i, I bet that, that's the other thing right is that like you actually like you see the progression of him from the very get-go to like slowly building his power with the force and like he gets a little bit better a little better a little better and i mean of course it's any game in general but like again i just think it's so fucking cool because it's jedi and this is the first time i feel like that they've really capture the essence of what it's like to be a padawan with the force and like slowly you're just like accelerating your yeah. skill set i guess and um everything's so badass about it. like the way that you save the game like he just sits down and meditates and like you got this whole grid of abilities and mm -hmm. the dude the the like what you were talking about the attention to detail right the ship when you're going from location to location the fact that you have to go sit in the seat and it actually takes you through light speed or warp speed and things like that I just, it's so good, dude. It's yeah, so good. I, I so was good. really happy with what Respawn was able to do with that game. And like, I was, I was concerned, like I said, but like they really, their attention to detail was absolutely incredible. And they yeah. like, they took their time and they did it well. And you can kind of see little things from like Titanfall with like the wall running that they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. The, the wall running. Yes. And just like how they grab, um, you know, just like, you know, it's just, it's great. Cause you, you can go back, even though I've beaten the game, it's fun just to go back and like, you know, you get the thing where, um, you can just like you know you have stormtroopers shooting at you and you just deflect all their bolts at once like there's a there's will be a section later on um where it's like a, a like a like a bunch of uh, stormtroopers like like five or six or something like well like there's a there's a commander and like this they stop they aim they fire all at once and if you just if you parry it he'll he'll deflect all of them oh, all back into it it's so good so uh, it's it's not a quick time event it's just like you know they're, they're up on a ridge or something like that mm -hmm, they're shooting mm -hmm. at you so you can do that and it's just like it just makes you feel badass and makes you yes. feel like you're yes. in control and it's just like it was a lot i i would have to agree with you it is um it's, it's satisfying so, man it's, it's satisfying it's fun i they don't have dlc planned for that game and i really hope that they get like community feedback and be like okay let's make some dlc for this because i want to go to more planets i want to play more of this game um because i do feel like even if you once you're done with um the main storyline and, and complete everything and 100 percent and go everywhere like as much as i want to go back through and, and explore more like i've already i've already been everywhere so yeah i've seen everything yeah. so like mm -hmm. i just want i want an excuse to play more of this game you know what i want i'm gonna tell you right now that they need to capitalize on this they need to do the sith version of this game yes yeah, so right wouldn't that be cool like like it's yeah it's it's kind of it kind of made me want that uh yeah the sith version of this game or just the ability to choose oh like, even better dude like the whole like, like idea of the knights of the old republic or not knights of the republic, but, um, um, yeah. 
there was Force Unleashed. Uh, it was like a uh, they, Force Unleashed was what they wanted this game, or they wanted to be like. This yeah, is the yeah. game that they want to force unleash to be. And it and force unleash was not that. It was bad. Oh, but you could so go lighter. Cool, you could go lighter dark in that game. You could. Which was pretty fun. Because I just think it'd be cool to like shed light on the whole relationship between the Sith Pad or well, he's not a Padawan, but because you know, in, in Star Wars lore, the the Sith, I think they only have there's only two at it's any given time. So. Yeah, but like it's yeah, but like, Palpatine kind of uh did what he wanted though. He had, he had he had Sith under him. He had like the like, true. They were technically like like Sith light, you know. True, true. <laughs> you fight Inquisitors, I think, in in uh, this game, right? Don't you fight Inquisitors? Yes. Yeah, right. I thought so. Yeah, yeah but I I I think it would have been yeah, just to have the ability to choose whether or like what path you want to go down would have made this game just an extra bit better. Even I'm though curious. it's still good. Hey, do they as the game goes on, do they talk more about Cal's backstory? Like, is yeah. that kind of okay? It's kind of like yeah, Inception, you, you, where you, you you find out his whole um, yeah you you find out the whole uh, thing and whatnot uh, and and uh, I was I wasn't really sure about the timeline for this. Apparently, this takes place right after. Uh, well, this takes place. Well, they show Obi Wan, so they had a holotape with Obi Wan in it. Duh, duh. Yeah, I like there definitely there definitely was a thing that I found where it was like Obi Wan comes out and says something. I don't, I don't remember so, that, but I know I know it was old Obi Wan too. It's it's I think it takes place in the the realm of Star Wars. I think it takes place between three and four. I think mm. is where it takes place. I can yeah. see that. I could see Order, that. Order sixty six is is a yeah yeah yeah, I think yeah, it all, I think yeah. Right. So that's what I think it is. Anyway, so mine and Crown does number two Jedi Fallen Order. Don, what's your number two? Uh, Gears five. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not to be mistaken, it's not. It's specifically not called Gears of War Five. It's Gears right. Five, which is weird. Uh, what for whatever reason, it doesn't matter why. Uh, yeah, I love the game. I thought Gears Four, I thought was okay. Um, but Five was very polished. The story is, I think, super cool. You get these really, really, really interesting landscapes. Literally going from like frozen tundra, like wasteland, to desert wasteland, like. Uh, and you have like, this cool skiff that's either obviously snow or, or sand. Um, but just, I thought really fun story. The multiplayer was really good. Big shot to my boy, Danny back home, Pennsylvania. We, we played together. Haven't played gear since gears three. Um, I thor- thoroughly enjoyed it. And it, it, you know, the story of four was like kind of meh, but like five, I thought was fire. Uh, I'm just such a sucker. Gears, the Gears of War series has been one of my favorite video game series of like straight up all time. Uh, like Gears of War two and three, just like masterpieces for me. Gears of War four kind of dropped it off a little bit, but and we don't talk about whatever that like prequel one was. But Gears <laughs> five, I don't even remember what it was called. Armageddon, it doesn't matter. But Gears five was really good. I enjoy. I put I put some good time into it. I really enjoy playing it. I. It just it really brought back. It felt like an older Gears game, which is what I enjoy because I just love the older Gears. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, simple. Just really, really enjoyed it. Loved it. I've seen it on sale just to play it on PC. I've I've contemplated picking it up just because, like you know, if it's on sale for twenty bucks, why not? You know, give it a go, dude. Honestly, in in in, there's something that is like notably the it's just gear. Like it's it, that is a Gears game. Like I feel like there's no other games that feel like Gears of War. Mm-hmm. and no it's definitely one in its own it is and it's and, it, and it's just it's just really fun to play when they do it right it's it's just perfect yeah that's exciting do you I'm still get to, to like when you walk up to people do you get to like chainsaw them and oh of course weapon? it wouldn't it wouldn't be the game if it wasn't. <laughs> that to yeah. me was like like the most unique part of gears of war was the fact that you could like walk up to people yes. with your machine gun and just saw them in half yeah which was how I died all the time. Yeah, I never the wanted to kill Lancer. them normally. The Lancer I always wanted was to... the, the name of it the with the chainsaw on it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, before we get into our number one, I got to take a piss real quick. So be right God damn it, Charlie. Now's a good time to plug Gamefly.com. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to they're gonna be like, you know what? You're going to be like, you're going to be a joke to you. Yeah, you know, right. It's funny. No, I just, I just, uh, this is the, this is my, this is my welcoming into the, uh, the overachievers ring of whatever and I don't, uh, I don't even know what it would be called yeah i don't know what it is either Charlie, he, he, death, he, he probably like, he probably sense. has some name for it i don't know 
he he he's he he knows all this. He like has thought of all these things. I you know I got to be honest. With you. I'm looking in in the background in his office. Does he have the Fallout? Like, is that the battle chest thing right there? Oh, probably. Yeah, it looks like a big Fallout chest. The big green thing be. on the middle yeah, shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the left. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what it is. That's a good question. I actually wanted to put for the biggest flop to be Fallout 76, but technically it came out in 2018, so I had to leave it off my list. Oh, but I guess it did, yeah. Let me yeah. tell you right now, man. Since he's not here, well, I mean, it's just to fill the time, that game was my biggest disappointment ever. I'm sure I everyone's love fan. Fallout, dude. I love yeah. the Fallout series. Yeah. And so does my my best friend that I game with. And we yeah. were both just like, I think we I think we got to the max level. We did everything you could do in the game. And then it, and it didn't take that long. It's a couple of weeks. And it's like for an online game, there's just nothing to do. Like we launch the nukes, build yeah. your build your house up. Yeah. And then what can you do? Oh, I could pay ten dollars to get all the shit that I wanted in the game exactly. that I paid 60 bucks for. You know, it, it's actually, I, I paid. Dude, I paid it's, 60 uh, bucks for that game. And let me tell you how fucking mad I was when like two days after it came out, they dropped the price to like half of what it was. I was furious. Tra- Charlie walks away. Charlie comes back and, and Krondo is screaming. Are we talking about Aurora Strike Force? Fall, f- no, fall no, we're talking about, so we talking about yeah. Marvel Strike Force. We could yeah. be. Uh, that, that conversation could be uh, traded into that one as no, well. No, no. But no, I was talking about uh, Fallout 76. It's is all, that a... Almost, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Ask, ask. No, 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 go ahead. I was gonna say it's almost a fortune it came out in 2019 because it should be a 2019 flop. Do you, is that a is that a Fallout battle chest I see behind you, Charlie? Sure yeah, I was saying that the Fallout 76 would have been my biggest disappointment, but it came out in 2019. I totally forgot about that game. Yeah, and you shouldn't because it should have been the shit. But they it's fucked it up. True. They did. Yeah. You know, I've I've seen it on sale a bunch of times. And it makes me like just want to buy it just to play it. I love Don't. the fall. <laughs> not even worth well, it on me. No, I I played the uh, I played the beta. The beta, like I pre ordered. Then you played the game. Yeah. It just <laughs> it just me. I love everything about Fallout. So like I just wanted to play. It. I was like, oh, this would be great. And then I was like, I'm not interested in this whatsoever. So like the, the yeah. Anyway, I, yeah, we're not here to talk about Fallout 76. Uh, yeah, let's get the number one. Let's get to number one. All right. That's Which Wait, number do I one? start off? Oh you yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, try, uh, boys, my my uh, my number what? one pick is going to be the remake is, of Resident okay. Evil Two. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that game for me was the shit. You didn't apologize about it. It was a I, genuinely really good game. Uh, so I'm a huge RE2 fan. I mean, the game gave me nightmares when I was a kid. I that like to me, it was just. At that point in time, dude, there was nothing like it. I mean, RE1 was so fucking scary. I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? And RE2, when it came out, was the ultimate game for me, right? With Leon and Claire, and you could play through A, play through B on the other character. For me, when they did this remake, which it actually came out like right before my birthday, I was just like, man, this is like the gaming way of saying happy birthday to me. Because as you were saying, it was so fucking good. Like the, the attention to detail um the fact that like you're walking around which is a pistol and a flashlight for the first portion of the game and i mean the first time you play through the game you obviously have no idea what's coming i mean as you play through it you can obviously anticipate things are going to come at you yeah but like the first time i came around the corner with leon and the tyrant pulls back the helicopter and just looks at you and he basically like bitch slaps you in the face i was just like what is this game dude they made it so good they took the same game that was already amazing and they made it even better i mean yeah. i have no complaints about that game i don't have a single complaint about that game except that i could have played it for an infinitely <laughs> infinite amount of time yeah for sure i mean i easily played through every scenario i could in that game and i and i'm not i'm actually really bad about not completing games like i'll get like 80 percent of the way through the game and get oh squirrel there's something else shiny dude, over same, here dude lately but, it's been the same yeah. yeah, that game was just incredible. And I'm so high. We were talking about it earlier. I'm so hype about the fact that they're doing the same people are doing RE3. So that yeah. guarantees the fact that that game is going to be amazing. True. Uh, uh, it's, True. Dude, I mean, like the tyrant following you around in RE2, like the first time I was playing the game, because I was playing it with like volume all the way up, lights off, just in the darkness. And like when he would be following you around, you know, all you hear is the dun, dun, dun. 
dun, <laughs> and you just turn around and he's right in your face and he's just staring at you and then just like grabs you by the throat. It's like that was terrifying, dude. Yeah, I had to turn the lights on. I was yeah. shit my pants. I, c- I almost, couldn't play dude. with lights off. I couldn't play with lights off. There I was, was terrified. I live alone. Streams of me screaming like straight up. Oh, and it's I not fake it. either, dude. You're like actually it. scared. Yeah, I was actually scared. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like as a grown ass man, you're like. Was I really just scared over a video game? I yeah, because it's scary. Yeah, yes. It's yes. scary as shit, dude. And then you start see, you start hearing things. You're like... They did such that? a good job with the ambiance. Wait a minute. They did such a good job with the environment and the ambiance of the environment and just hearing a moan or scream far... Yeah, agreed. Definitely. And I also like the fact that... Okay, so the reason that I said that this is different than... When it, that, uh, that this is a good remake is because they actually kind of chopped and screwed the whole storyline and they actually uh built upon what was already in the original re2 and kind of like went into more elaborate detail with certain things like um i can't think of the name of the it's been it's been like i I played it in january so i can't remember the name of the characters off the top of my head but the the daughter that you have to follow and like when you're in the little room and the the old guy's trying to follow or trying to to get you or sherry that's her name yeah and you gotta like crawl into the space you got to hide behind the guy even though he's like right around the corner he's like where the yeah. fuck are you you know yeah. like this all those parts of the game were not in the original and um sure. man i i'm very excited to see what they're going to do with three very hell yeah. excited hell yeah 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 uh I, I the only thing that sucks but i don't have I, like i feel like i won't have the same passion that Kronda just displayed for his number one and i feel like i'm just not doing it service nah so, uh, man no, that's, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna step in your toes dumb because my number one well, is hey. resident evil 2 yes so. yes you both yes, have the same number one yes. and two that's crazy and you know what's, yeah well that's because it was the shit dude so it was just yeah, just, it was to, just a just a piggyback i'm actually off a little surprised on yours charlie well, mine com- also comes from that same, same uh, nostalgic quality of like, okay, well, here's this, here's this game, you know, because it was for what PlayStation Two, I want to say it was. No, it was PlayStation One when it, it came was out. PlayStation One. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, because I guess you have it right there. So at the time, the original is like is nineteen years ago or twenty something years. It was 90, 99, 98, something like that. Yeah, it was like nineteen ninety eight, I think. Yeah. So it's over twenty years old at this point, and so like I, it, it was. I'm happy oh, no. that they brought Let me look it back. at the box. Actually, since you have it right there. I'm happy that they brought it back yeah, 1988 for, for another generation to experience this game because at the time like you said it was a it was a feat it was a gaming feat to be able to do this and have like a sort of emotions being brought out from you as a gamer and that's why it, it really set the stage for a lot of different games so back then it was, it was a big thing but the reason why it's my number one is for a lot of what you just said so even if you've never played uh, Resident Evil before you've never played any of these games you don't know anything about these games whatsoever if you play this game uh, you have, because you want to play a zombie game like it is a survival horror game and I'm also scared easily as a it grown ass man it is zombie horror survival game in my opinion it, 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 it evoked emotions out of me that I didn't know that I had like, yeah, I, for sure. I was just like yeah because I'm sitting here because you're playing uh, you're playing at your house like I'm sitting down here in my my theater playing it so like I have surround sound all around me so <laughs> That'd be terrifying it was it was it was absolutely terrifying because when Mr X is walking around because he's not just you know you, you have to run away from him you hear him upstairs and so I'm literally hearing him walk around upstairs like oh, from me dude. with all the speakers so like like as the door open, I'm like, I'm like, I'm turning around. Like, what the fuck is the really fuck? I'm like, I'm, I'm, it's my screen. Like, why am I turning around to see yeah. and listen to what's going Seriously. on here? The sound design is top notch. The characters top notch. Yeah. The story that like you said, they, they took elements from the original story and, and molded it to fit a modern day scenario. And like, it was just great. It's just like, you know, like, why don't they just call for help? It's like, well, the cell phone towers are down or whatever. Yeah, like, right. They couldn't do anything. It's like, it, granted, still, I st- still think it takes place in, back in the, uh, in the nineties too. Right. If I don't remember, if I remember it's the early nineties. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, they don't necessarily have all these, you know, the same technology we have today, but it's just like, I mean, look at the cars they're driving in the game, you know, like everything's yeah. very old schoolish, but like, just like the environments are there. Like, you know, they brought back some, some of the boss battles that have like, if you remember it whatsoever, but it took a different spin on it. Mm-hmm. Um, like the crocodile it, fight, for example, a, a crocodile fight yeah. as well as, um, man, it's just, it's just so good. It's See, but you like, know, like, for example, like in my opinion, they didn't have the clock tower in, in the original RE2. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like where you have to get mm-hmm. the, you have to go up in there because that's the first time that you have to interact with the tyrant, like constantly persistently following you. 
And that wasn't, that was not in the original, but that's the thing. That's like, that's one of those little things they did to this game to step it up a notch and to not make it so linear and boring, I guess, in a sense, like, yeah. Yeah. And just, just having that sort of like ticking time bomb as you just can't get away from him, which is like, it just, it was tough. I'm it telling you, that was so terrifying the first time. Like, I do. Okay, so speaking of the clock tower part, when you have to go into the library and you have to push the, the, the bookshelves together, that part right there caused me so much stress and anxiety because the first time I'm like, I can hear him walking up and I'm just like, push the bookshelf faster, man. Like, why are you taking your sweet ass time with it? And you turn around. He's literally right in your face. It's terrifying. It's so, so good. It was so good. They know how to scare so you. Good. Dude, yeah, I, and you have here. and you have limited amount of um, bullets and I definitely pack. ran out of ammo. I had to restart the game, die because you can't kill everything. Stuff True. will respawn, and True. I and I in in the original RE2, that is not how it was. Like you kill shit is dead. So yeah. oh yeah, stuff respawn and they come back. Um, okay. Boys, I, yeah, I, 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 gotta, I gotta hop in. I, I'm I'm so sorry to, to derail you uh, from saying how scary right. this game is. I have I have to babysit in ten minutes. So okay. I, I know, right, I know right, there right. could be a, you could write this thesis on how scary this game is. Yeah, I'm, with, could, I'm right. with you. I'm with you. Uh, my number one uh, is going to come to a shocker to a lot of people, I think, uh, except for you, Charlie. Obviously, it's uh, Apex Legends. Oh, which I I feel I feel like I'm going to get question marks for the why this the game. Why is would you number one? Well, okay, thank you. Uh, number one. Um, well, because <laughs> it's got I, a massive pro scene. Right, it does, but not even just that. I I loved Overwatch. I did. I do like battle royale games. I did. I really did enjoy Titanfall, and I feel like Respawn made all three of those in one game and did it. Okay, how how often do you hear this this sentence? A game came out, nothing was broken, it wasn't boring, and it didn't suck in in 2019. You don't hear it. You very don't. Often, right? No. Like I like and. Not only did Respawn do it, they did it with no advertising. This game came like shadow, like overnight. I remember I was I was away at work. I was like away for a weekend at work, and it was like, "Yo, Apex Legends, Apex Legends." And I was like, "What? What the hell?" Is and I got up and played. I was like, "Oh my god!" But not only was it just a really well done game, it actually toppled Fortnite for mm. a for a, a hot minute. Like, Thank God. Not even just overnight. <laughs> it toppled Fortnite for. A, like a legitimate amount of time like as the most viewed game on twitch and stuff and like you have people leaving you have pros fortnite pros leaving to play apex which i feel like a lot of those migrated back since mm-hmm. but apex legends just really really nailed it in replayability for me like just like if it wasn't for destiny 2 probably this year and destiny 2 actually being fire for this year i probably it probably would have been my most played game was apex legends um but Destiny was fire this year. Anyway, but uh, the map, dope. The class or the characters, dope. Gameplay, dope. Like there wasn't ever a time where I booted that game back up and was bored. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It really ticked every box for me in terms of, uh, and that's what that's what it is for me right now is replayability. Because I'm like you, like I've never been that way as I was younger, but as an adult now, I play a game. And like 80, 80, way, 80% of the way through, I'm just like, okay, um, um, I, I got to do something <laughs> yeah, else. And yeah. it's not because I'm bored or I don't like it. I just, there's, I don't have the attention span for video games like I used to when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and Apex didn't do that. Genuinely loved it. Loved every bit of it. I still do like it. You know, so. I liked it for the fact that it took people away from Fortnite because I hate Fortnite with a passion. I do too. And the great thing about Apex toppling Fortnite was it still kept all the like super young kids in Fortnite, and like Apex is definitely a more I would say a more adult game. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. It's kind of which, Borderlands-ish in the in the art. Sure, style. yeah, art style, yeah, yeah, for sure. I yeah, Borderlands Three wasn't you even you forgot, any of our. Well, I, I figured I one of you guys. I figured Ashy would have been the one to do. No, this. I'm I'm not I'm not a Borderlands <laughs> fan. Uh, uh, of course, hilarious. Uh, I'm actually surprised it wasn't a year, Charlie. Um, I, I mean I don't know I I enjoy I totally forgot about you know, it. Can, how, how about this can we do honorable, honorable mention. Men- can we do honorable mentions honorable mention well 100%. if we okay in that case I have two honorable mentions I would love to throw out uh World War Z genuinely dope game I I don't, fun. so much fun just a fun game uh and Friday the Thirteenth the game I don't know if you played okay. Friday the Thirteenth the game it. me and my buddies 
my like clan from Destiny Two, we have a Friday. Th- we it's like every Sunday, we we like eight of us will boot up Friday the Thirteenth. It is so much fun. It is so much fun. It's so stupid of a game. It's so much fun. That's my honorable mention. All right, so we're gonna go through and do the biggest flop and the most overhyped, like the, the TLDR version of it, since you got to run. Yeah. Uh. I'll, well, what, what you guys have honorable mentions? Mine was Borderlands Three. Mine was Code Vein. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I got my biggest flop and my most overhyped. You ready? I feel like we're yeah. all gonna be the same except for Charlie. I'm curious. Oh, you, you go. Well, yeah. You go. No. Nah, biggest flop for me was Anthem. Yeah. Uh, that's, mine. Yes. that's mine. Same. Really? Wait. Wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Charlie. Sekiro's not yours. Biggest flop? Oh, not biggest flop. I guess, I guess I was mixing biggest flop and and overhyped and and not liked game. Yeah. yeah. Or di- di- biggest disappointment. Yeah. The biggest disappointment and the, for me was. And, and I was actually thinking about what you guys were saying uh, about the voice acting and stuff like that. I thought the voice acting in Anthem was fantastic. Like the conversations you had to have with people, like yeah. they did a pretty good job. But we can all just we can all agree that game fell short epically. Uh, it was, and, yeah, it was definitely like I was. I had a lot of. I really wanted that game to do well. We all- apparently, they're like we've talked about it that they're you know, like redoing it or whatever it is. But um, for like Anthem Year Two. Or whatever they're calling it, yeah. but I, <laughs> hard pass. Hard is a hundred percent hard right. pass. But Most maybe if it's like oh, maybe sorry. if it's over, maybe if it's like five bucks, I might buy it. <laughs> it's five bucks, yeah, exactly. I don't. Exactly. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think if that game was out for free, I wouldn't. I just don't care. Like, yo, you had your chance to make this fire game. Fire, cool. fire. The gameplay was. Pretty cool. You know, when I yeah, first it saw fun. it, I was like, yo, this is so cool. I, I, I'm Iron Man. I'm literally Iron Man. Yeah. And then it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. uh, it's whack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, I'm Iron Man. And I do the same thing over and over and over again that I've been doing since like level one. For sure. Um, all right. My most overhyped game, Death Stranding. Ooh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. Like, I'm sorry, it's, but it's, yes, you can, you can, you can, you can polish a turd any way you want. It's still a turd, right? To me. That is not a game. You're a literally a. It's a. It's a delivery. You're a FedEx simulator. The way I think for the, I, the post apocalypse it, or something like that. I view the game as being a vessel for the cinematics. Like all the game, all the gameplay you're doing is a vessel for the the cinematic like output of the game, which I think could. I think that's what he. I think that's what he wanted. I can totally right. see that. There's not much. There's really not you're, much game. You're playing gameplay. a movie. You're playing I was a movie. watching streamers play it, and it's like I, I was just—I remember just sitting there being like, "What the fuck are you doing, dude? Yeah. Like you're literally yeah. like climbing and running and getting the shit that falls off your back." Like, yeah. I, yeah. So, I just didn't get it. But you know, Charlie said it earlier. Um, that's a definitely a niche game. Like you very, have to very have, much. you you very have to be much. into that kind of very thing. Much. And very for much. me, I would fall asleep within the first five seconds of playing that game because I'm it's, yeah. I would say that's on the same realm as um, No Man's Sky. It's like you just need it's a uh, it's a yeah. good it's a good like game and chill kind of game. And so sure. like just it's you can't um yeah you just got to be able to enjoy it essentially like and you have to know that this is what you're getting into. It's not something that you're gonna just you know it's not an action game. It's just it's it's literally it's not, just yeah. like hang out yeah. and chill yeah. and yeah, like true. don't worry about it. So. True. And my most anticipated release in twenty nine or twenty twenty gonna be two RE three and Final Fantasy seven remake. Oh, I can't wait for that game. Oh, that, that game is it. gonna turn the internet oh, upside down. So good. It's gonna turn the internet upside down. Oh, it's gonna be so I can't good. Wait. I can't wait for that either. Yeah. So we're gonna have to have a full podcast just for that game. The FF That's seven fine. edition. I'm a hundred percent on board oh, with that. Yeah, you so guys, good. you guys can do that to read. You guys can do that for each other. I, I don't know if I care enough about it to be honest. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was never no, a Final fantasy guy. I was never no, a Final fantasy hey, guy. And that's you know? and that's the thing is like you either are or you're not. Like because because yeah. that game Final Fantasy seven to me was like I think I was like 10, 12 years old. Like sure. first game I really got like balls deep in. You know sure. and <laughs> it, yeah when Aerith when Aerith died or Aerith like I remember just sitting there like I don't get her back. Like what? So yeah. True. God, so, yeah. Sephiroth looks so dope. The whole game's gonna be sick. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Anyways. I love you. I love you. So Don, what was your most overhyped? Was it Anthem as well? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, everyone was saying it was gonna be the Destiny Killer, and uh, hey, look, 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 what's thriving right now, and what's not. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Well, I guess you guys can uh, take a guess of what my most overhyped could, is. Wouldn't wouldn't hmm. couldn't, couldn't, couldn't guess in a million years. Hmm. Guess is it Star years. Wars: Fallen Order? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it The Division Two? No. It's Borderlands Three. Wait, what? Really? I'm joking. It's a oh. <laughs> oh, fuck you. I hate you. I was you actually got me. I got got there. You go. You got both of us. I got got. Yeah. Well, just just because. Uh, I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, I it's just this is me personally talking. Like, I just did not enjoy that game whatsoever, just because of the mechanics of the game. Sure. Um, but and I just I just it's just because I played. We've had a discussion about this. I've I've just played board. I've played Dark Souls for so many years. I just got used to that system. Yeah, and it's like I honestly, could not like, wrap my head around it. Yeah, and I feel like when you hear the Dark Souls, the Dark Souls people are like making another game. You anticipate Dark Souls kind of in a way. Yeah, and when it's not definitely. that. Like you, you go into the preconceived notion of what the game is going to be, and even if it's not bad per se, it's not what you expected or wanted. So it automatically has a negative bite in your subconscious, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, those are our games of the year. I'd say collectively, game, I think Resident Evil One or Resident Evil Two remake. Oh yeah, we all enjoyed it. I think I think it'd be hard not to enjoy that game to be unless you're only horror games, which is fair too if you don't. You know, I mean, yeah, it's it depends on what you like and what you don't like. But yeah, so I yeah. think collectively that would be the Overachievers Gaming Podcast of 2019 is Resident Evil 2 remake. I oh, also yeah, am looking fair. forward to the uh, remake of Resident Evil 3. I <gasps> will be playing the shit out of that yes. game. I'll play it. Um, yeah, and hopefully in my new house whenever that Ooh. comes out, So hell yeah but anyway uh thanks Grando, for being a part of our podcast uh you can find it's us on og.podcast uh on instagram our twitter is overachievers p uh, our website is being where you can get this episode and every other episode of what we talk about for video games marvel strike force uh final fantasy tactics and all that fun stuff so uh also quick question not question quick announcement we're doing a giveaway if you like um Marvel Strike Force. We're doing a power core giveaway for when we hit a thousand downloads per episode. We're very close. We're very like nine fifty. So insane. tell your friends. Uh, we'll put. A, I'll put a link in this so you can you know hang out in um, our Discord. Uh, I forgot. We also have a Discord that we talk about stuff. And we have a good time where we all all of our guests come in talk about you know games, all that fun shit. So I'll also put a link in the description below. You know, check out the Discord. Check out the um, the giveaway that we're doing. Uh, probably will happen in the new year. Probably like midway through January where we do the giveaway. But uh, yeah. anyway, so yeah, thank you all for uh, coming out again. Have See a merry 2019. 20, 20. Happy end of the decade. God bless Woo! everyone.